you know what really grinds my gears? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> well, kind of kidding, but not really. Um, and so I want to talk about the nature of denial. The nature of denial. All of us experience denial. All of us engage in it. All of us utilize it. And I think the thing that really annoys me about uh, people who would call themselves self-help teachers or spiritual teachers or anyone in this field who considers themselves a teacher and you know these people they inevitably attract uh, people who are in serious pain uh, emotional pain and suffering and all they get peppered with relentlessly these audiences who are desperately seeking to end their own suffering are just being needled by these people, by these teachers saying, and, and the tone, the, the passive aggressive tone of it all is you need to change. You need to change. You need to change. You need to do this. You need to do that. You need to do this. And now you need to do that. If you want to feel this, you need to do that. If you ever want to be able to this, then you have to do that. Just prodding them. You have to be authentic. You have to accept the truth. Just rubbing their noses in all of these um, seeming issues. Things like denial, shaming them for denial. You're in denial. You need to accept the truth. You have to this. You need to that. You should this. Just pressing and pressing on these people who are desperate and will do anything. And so they just impress, oppress themselves, continually oppressing themselves. I need to meditate more. I need to uh, do this more. I need to do more affirmations or I need to whatever it may be. And I've seen it firsthand. You know, I've seen firsthand people obsessively listening to, um, you know, a guided meditation. You know, they're meant to listen to it once a night and they'll listen to it five times a day. You know, desperately trying to fix themselves and heal themselves. And I just want to call bullshit on the whole thing. It's bullshit because the reality of it is, is that these spiritual teachers, I mean, most of them that I've come across, they're trying to teach you something, but they're not sharing themselves. They're not sharing their pain. They're not sharing how it felt for them when they felt that way and when they transcended it if they actually did transcend it in the first place. You know, it's, in order to inspire someone, you have to share yourself. You have to be willing to bear the truth of yourself. And this is why I want to talk about denial. Because... The nature of denial is very, very important to understand. <clears throat> and I want to categorize dot denial in the in with the likes of dissociation. Um, you know, denial, dissociation, um, self-rejection, um, you know, deception. Um and I want anyone listening to this that is in denial, I want you to know that it's okay. It's absolutely perfect. It's absolutely perfect. And in fact, it's beautiful. Denial is an incredible mechanism for protecting ourselves. And, and it's really important to understand the nature of denial 
and the purpose of it so we can forgive ourselves for being in denial and trust that when it's right for us to come out of denial, when when we're mature enough to accept the actual truth, the reality, then, um, then we will. And so here's, so the reason why denial is so powerful and so um, beneficial is because you're a being that is programmed to evolve and act, in fact conquer your environment at all costs. If you if you are in if you're in your ecosystem, you're a, some kind of being. You're thriving. If you can access everything you need in order to thrive, then thriving is what happens. And so you thrive, you vigorously grow and expand um, until there's some kind of limitation in your environment. Now, when you hit that limitation, you're programmed to conquer that at all costs. And that's what will happen. And so if you're capable of conquering it, then you will. You'll evolve, you'll adapt, you'll adapt, and you'll overcome. Now, it's important to understand that that's how you're programmed. That's, it, it's the very essence of what makes you um, who you are, like in terms of being a human being. And so... What people fail to recognize is that one of the greatest deterrents to you growing, expanding, thriving, conquering, overcoming is the truth. It's the truth. One of the greatest limiters of your capability and capacity to thrive is the reality of a truth that you are not mature enough to understand. And especially when when you start to understand how consciousness works, then you realize that uh, believing that we can do something is the most important component to being able to do that thing. If we believe we can, we can. If we believe we can't, we can't. It's like the placebo effect. What it, what we believe about that thing is determines whether we're capable of it or not. If we, if we believe it's possible to climb Everest, then we may try. If we, if we don't believe it's possible, then we definitely won't try. It's our belief about what it means. That's all that matters. And so it's our nature to protect that. And this is what it means by protecting the innocent. <laughs> and I'm pretty I'm sure that's why these archetypes arose within society of um, superheroes protecting the innocent. Because What is the ego other than a mechanism for protecting our innocence? Our innocence being an untainted perspective. Because an untainted perspective is capable of anything. It's capable of climbing Everest. It's capable of literally anything. The innocence, our innocence, is the most powerful force there is. Because the less limited you are aware that you are, the more capable and powerful you are. And so denial is simply this. It's protecting the innocence of our perspective. It's protecting our own innocence. It's preventing our perspective from being tainted and therefore it's not limiting us from continuing to evolve and expand even in the face of serious, severe trauma. 
and I've spoken about this before, you know, a three, four-year-old child who's suffered abuse and who's dissociated from that abuse. Literally, their mind has convinced them that it was something else that happened. That it was some kind of nightmare. Whatever it may be. And I've experienced this myself. I've suffered intense trauma uh, when I was a child. Um, it's, it's, you know, I won't go into the, to the depths of it, but it wasn't abuse or anything like that, but it was a gross misinterpretation of night of nightmares. And, um, you know, it wasn't through going back, uh, and regressing through hypnosis later in life that the truth of that, the truth of it emerged and if I'd accepted the truth of it when I was a child, it would have limited my capacity to thrive in profound ways. You know, I wouldn't have been able to, I could not have coped, I couldn't have gone to school, I couldn't have functioned in the world. And so when you feel into the nature of denial, it's so loving. It's, sa it's saving the innocence, it's saving our innocence so we can keep going, so we can keep thinking that anything's possible. That denial, it, it, it is so loving, so loving. And yet when we become adults and we begin the journey of self-awareness, self-knowledge, we inevitably come up, come into these, you know, come across spiritual teachers who are saying you have, you know, the truth will set you free. You have to this, you have to that. If you want peace, you must this. Like there's some ticking time bomb that's about to go off if you don't do it today, if you don't hurry up and do it now. And they just become the oppressor. The teacher themselves becomes part of the person who's experienced the trauma. They become part of um, their reality of being the antagonist, of being the bully, of being the one that's forcing them to change. They become a reflection of the part of them that is rejecting something within them. And it's brutal. It's brutal. And so my hope in sharing this is for no reason other than, you know, hoping that if you're someone that feels this pressure to continually transform yourself, to continually change, to continually be authentic, to continually only work with the truth, with the reality. You know, I can hear these teachers saying these things. You have to work with the truth. You have to be authentic. No, it's bullshit. Because the ultimate truth, the absolute ultimate truth for the individual is that true authenticity means that in this moment, you can feel the truth of me and, that, and you can also feel my fear and you can feel my denial. And I'm allowing you to experience that of me. I'm authentically expressing myself to be as I am now. That's what authenticity is. Authenticity doesn't mean that I, here I am, a human being, free of denial. Here I am, an entirely reconciled human being. <laughs> That's not what authenticity is. Authenticity means that I'm revealing to you the truth of me now. That I'm, that I am in denial of some things and that I'm not of others. And that I'm going to withhold this from you because it feels good to me and I'm not going to withhold that. 
and that I trust that the way that my nature will arise because I know that I'm programmed to vigorously grow and expand, because I know I'm programmed to overcome. I know I'm programmed to conquer. I know I'm programmed to transcend and to thrive. And I trust my nature that at the ideal time, when my state of awareness and maturity is at a level where, where I can accept the reality of what happened, when I can accept the truth of what happened, and not a moment sooner, that is the moment that I will step into that reality. That is how you love yourself, through understanding, through understanding yourself, not through forcing yourself to accept the truth, not through forcing yourself to change, not through forcing yourself to transform. I have to change if I am to this. If I want peace, I'm going to have to that. No, you can have peace now by allowing yourself to be in denial now. That's how you find peace. You find peace by st when you can stop being the antagonist in your life, prodding yourself to change. I need to do this. I have to do that. Have I done my modalities today? Have I been disciplined today? Have I this today? Oh, just oppressing yourself into all these things. Do this. Do that. Listen to another audio CD. Listen to another self-improvement book. <sighs> Just driving yourself to change the whole time. Pushing, pushing. You can feel the abrasiveness. You're, you, are, you are your own oppressor. You have your hands around your own throat choking yourself to death, forcing yourself to change, refusing to accept parts of yourself that are perfectly natural and in fact profoundly powerful. Denial is an incredible and wonderful gift. Deception is essential in nature for certain species to survive their predators. But we look at these things with such shame. We shame each other for using deception. You're being deceitful. No. <laughs> what? Well, well, yeah, but it doesn't make that person a bad person. They're withholding a truth because of the perceived impact of revealing that truth, because of the perceived consequences, potentially causing pain, potentially causing suffering. And I'll tell you right now that mercy trumps um, authenticity every time. Mercy trumps honesty. Every human being will lie before they will cause harm especially if the, the, the reality of that truth, of that honesty, um, could cause suffering and prevent um, the expansion of that person, prevent them from becoming more. And, you know, there, I, I can bet you that most people who have experienced this um, having their innocence being robbed um, I bet they would choose something different for themselves than the moment that that innocence was robbed I bet they wish they had dissociated so they could have grown into an adult at least and then reconciled that within themselves at a later time When your innocence has been corrupted, you, you, there's no going back. There's no going back. Yes, of course, you can reconcile it later in your life. But the impact of the corruption of innocence in that moment, because of the truth of it, limits the ability 
for that being to mature. They, it's like they stay stuck. They live their life believing that the universe is, you know, the, the, the environment that they live in is basically a living hell. Because let's be honest, most of these corruptions of innocence um, happen due to, you know, family members, people that are meant to love them more than and protect them and keep them safe, um, hurting them in really damaging ways. And when you're a child and those people that are hurting you and meant to love you and protect you are the ones hurting you and you're also dependent on them for your survival, then you have to corrupt your entire nature just to survive. So <laughs> what's the moral of the story? I mean, there is no moral, but I, I'm really appealing to the spiritual teachers out there, the ones that call them teachers. Stop teaching. Stop teaching. Get up, down off your soapbox. Get down off your chair that's perched higher than everyone else in the room. And be with us. Be with us. Share yourself with us. Share the pain. What was it like? How did you recognize that the right moment for you to let go of the denial and to accept the truth? What was it like? How did it change your life? How did it transform you? Share yourselves. Stop teaching us. Stop probing us. Stop trying to force us to change or get us to change. And stop getting triggered because we don't apply your modalities. Stop getting triggered because we're not changing fast enough. And so, so you, you know, can you see? I'm deliberately telling you to change. <laughs> this, that's what it's like being on the receiving end. You have so much to offer. Of course, intense and deep knowledge um, and wisdom. But what we really want you to share with us is yourselves. Make yourselves human to us. We want to feel you. We want to feel like you're one of us. And that's the only thing that's really going to inspire us. is your story and what it meant to you to transform in that way. Assuming that you have transformed in that way and you're not just projecting your own stuff onto us, that could enti be entirely possible as well. But <laughs> And to everyone else out there that's, for whatever reason, has come across this podcast right now, who's feeling oppressed, who's feeling the pressure to change, who's feeling like you know, they never seem to be getting anywhere or moving forward or there's always another thing they need to do in order to X, Y, Z. Just placing condition upon condition upon condition upon experiencing peace. If I just this, I will be at peace. <laughs> if I do, only listen to this for 21 days then I will be at peace <laughs> or you could just be exactly as you are now and be at peace with that be at peace with being in denial be at peace with avoiding the truth <laughs> Understanding that it's saving you. It's enabling you to keep moving forward. And in the moment that you are able to move forward and accept the truth of whatever the thing you're trying to avoid or in denial of, 
will arise at the ideal time. Because your mind is your ally, your body is your ally. And both of those things together are entirely devoted to the evolution of the spirit. Okay. Feels like the right place to finish. So I'm going to finish there. <laughs> okay, that's it for the nature of denial. Catch you soon. Cheers for now.